Antony van Leeuwenhoek is a pioneer of science. He's the father of microscopy. And amazingly, he left 26 of his original microscopes to the Royal Society. Incredible. Unfortunately, we won't be showing you those today because Keith, you guys lost them. Kinda. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's do <laughs> Let's talk about it. It wasn't Keith that lost them, by the way. Not personally, no. Well, let's talk mm. about Van Leeuwenhoek first. Well, let, let's have a look at him. This is what he looked like. And he's holding in his hand one of his own microscopes, just that. As I said, 26 of them mm. were given to the Royal Society. We know all about them because of this document here. So this is an account of Leeuwenhoek's gift to the Royal Society of his very best microscopes. It's written by Martin Folks, who was a, at this time a vice president, later a president, and written in 1724. So it says the legacy consists of a small Indian cabinet, in the drawers of which are 13 little boxes or cases, each containing two microscopes, handsomely fitted up in silver, all of which not only the glasses, but also the apparatus for managing of them were made with the late Mr. Leeuwenhoek's own hands. Amazing, the original wow. microscopes. Yeah, so it gives you one by one what each microscope is. Looks like there were 27. Looks like you've got an extra there. Each one would have been made for a particular specimen in mind. How did they get lost? Well, uh, they were borrowed by another fellow of the Royal Society later than this. Uh, at the end of the 18th century, a fellow called Everard Hume. We loaned the microscopes to him, never got them back. So he may have borrowed them from simple curiosity. He may have wanted to check something that Leeuwenhoek had observed. There have been alleged Leeuwenhoek microscopes popping up on eBay. Every time they dredge a canal in Holland, they, they claim to find one of these things. Uh, Leeuwenhoek seems to have dropped an awful lot into canals. You never know. I mean, it's conceivable that, that you know, these things may just show up one day. We, we, we like to hope. Well, luckily, we can still give you an idea mm. of what one of these microscopes would have looked like. Not just because there's one in the picture, oh. but we've got something here, haven't we? I better check the gloves That's on. right, glove up. All right. One day someone may borrow those white gloves of Destiny Brady and not bring them back. Here we go. This is a replica? Yeah, so this is a reproduction that was very kindly donated to the Royal Society by one of its fellows, Sir Hans Kornberg. It's really just to give an idea of, of how these things would have worked. So you have a single lens, it's sandwiched between a couple of plates, silver in this case, and you would mount your specimen on the pin just here and then you would manipulate it so you could focus it on the lens. So you'd hold it right up to your eye in very bright light and you would try and snatch a glimpse of your specimen that way. You know when I hear about Van Leeuwenhoek being the sort of pioneer of microscopy I always imagine him looking down a traditional looking microscope. Mm. It never occurred to me that his microscope didn't even look like what I no, consider a microscope. They're single lens instruments, but they were very, very powerful. I mean, it's thought that he's the first person to observe bacteria, so he could really get some pretty good resolution out of them. We do have some original samples, which is quite interesting That's in itself. That's right. Well, these are really good objects. So when Leeuwenhoek wrote to the Royal Society, because the fellows want to repeat experiments, he sends specimens so they can duplicate what he's done. And these little packets contain 17th century century specimens. We can't look inside this one because it's actually been specially mounted for display here in a case at the Royal Society. But what's in this first one? This is a cow's optic nerve. So Leven begins to write to the Royal Society on this in 1674 and he, he slices up a, a cow's eye eyeball and uh, has a look at what's what's behind it, the optic nerve just to see what kind of structure it has and as you can see from the rather beautiful drawing there that he had commissioned it's a lovely thing. The optic nerve is inside this little sleeve we can't quite see it today unfortunately but I imagine it's pretty invisible anyway. But we can see what Leeuwenhoek saw via the artist's drawing. And what's this here? Is this for scale? There's like some little creepy crawly next to the nerve. Yeah figure two it may, may well be a scale thing. Yeah. Okay we do have more samples though this is what you would get and he would just attach one of these small objects to one of the letters he sent in. He'd pop it on board a ship and off it would come to the Royal Society where the fellows could take a look at what's in there. Cotton seeds are the nicest ones I think so let's have a look at some of those maybe. 2nd of April 1686 so these are very very old cotton seeds indeed. So it's a tiny tiny specimen packet and you can probably just see in there. <laughs> 
Some little cotton seeds. Some 1686 cotton seeds. More cotton seeds, I think. <laughs> so this is the original packet, I think, for that one. But if I just open that, you can see the stains on the paper where those seeds originally were. It feels a bit like we're clutching at straws, looking at stains of seeds, but all right. Oh. So a bit of plant material there, I should think. Oh, this is very cool. This is your 17th century signs. There you go, people. You saw it here first on objectivity. Sorry we haven't got those silver microscopes. Oh, this, is, this is so much more interesting, surely. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's way, way more boring. <laughs> but, it, but it's what we've got. <laughs> and it is, oh, hang on, this one looks good. Yeah, yeah. What's this? If you speak Dutch, I believe that says more dry brown more stuff. More brown stuff, yeah. There you go. Here's one last thing. It says the Leeuwenhoek specimens. This envelope contains paper packets in which is stored a proportion of the specimens sent by Van Leeuwenhoek to the Royal Society. So it looks like this is some stuff that science was done on in the 1980s. That's right. So uh, the specimens have been looked at uh, in modern times, of course, partly to see what it was possible for Leeuwenhoek to see using contemporary technology. Oh, mm. so it was like, you know, 300 years later, what can we do? Wow. Don't sneeze. You're getting that, James. This is once in a lifetime you get to see this. <laughs> Keith, when you told me that you were going to show me some Van Leeuwenhoek specimens, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit excited. Yeah. And, and now? Less so. Small comforts. Still liked it, mm -hmm. but not a showstopper. Here we have a Van Leeuwenhoek article in Filtrans where we're actually finding out what he's doing. That is a that, great opening bad. line. I send some observations about spittle. Yeah. Now that I have your attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though my teeth are kept usually very clean, nevertheless, when I view them in a magnifying glass, I find growing between them a little white matter as thick as wetted flour. In this substance, though I could not perceive any motion, I judged there might probably be living creatures. 